of the results of the Arizona 2020 election audit show President Joe Biden won, but the investigation may not be over. Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich has told Maricopa County officials to preserve election records for review and potential litigation. In a statement, the Republican Attorney General said the Arizona Senate's report, quote, raises some serious questions regarding the 2020 election. And joining us now for further analysis is chairman of the Election Transparency Initiative and former acting deputy secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, Ken Cuccinelli. Ken, great to see you. Welcome back. Uh, first off, I know that you've been following the Arizona audit really closely. I'd like to get your thoughts on Attorney General Bernovich's concerns about the report. Do you think that it raises serious questions? Well, certainly there's, there's, in, there's gaps between the law and the performance identified here. And one of the things that rarely happens is an entity like the Attorney General's office, Mark Bernovich's office, actually running them to ground. And that's not because we presume anybody is guilty of anything at this stage, but to fully flesh out, take the audit all the way down to the individuals in a particular category of failure, for instance. For instance, uh, thousands of people voting from a prior address, allegedly. Well, you know, a, a formal investigator going to those houses and identifying whether that's actually true really puts a lot of meat on the bones of a conclusion like you saw in the audit. So I also think just philosophically it's important for state legislatures to see themselves as being the entity that's supposed to do these sorts of audits. The Constitution says they pick the electors in the presidential races, and they should be the ones running these audits. Yeah, and as we mentioned, uh, the report concluded that President Joe Biden won the state by a bigger margin than previously, previously that is reported. Um, that said, what more can you tell us about the report and audit? I know the Heritage Foundation's Hans von Spakovsky recently wrote in part, and you sort of mentioned this, the purpose of an audit is really not to overturn an election. Can we talk a little right. bit more? Yeah, there's no question. And that, you know, there's a lot of popular hue and cry about, and, and President Trump fans some of this, of course, uh, that somehow this will reach a different conclusion in Arizona. That's not the point of an audit. I agree with Hans entirely. Um, it's to understand what happened. Um, it is partly to uh, provide information to Attorney General Brnovich in that state, and it's also intended to provide information to the state legislature so they can fix the weak spots. And one of the ex things we see rather clearly is the need for much cleaner voter rolls. And this is being a, this is a repeated theme from other states as well, um, because those the lack of connection between voting outcomes by individuals and the voter rolls is turning up in place after place. VoteRef.com nonprofit uh, did an analysis using Nevada's own government information and found in 15 of their 17 counties, the government's own information about who voted and how many ballots were cast did not match. Uh, that doesn't mean there was cheating per se, but it does mean that in 15 out of 17 counties, they didn't get it right. So surely there's room for improvement there, and that that's what things like the Arizona audit are really for, um, and that's what we at the Election Transparency Initiative work on. We're trying to fix the problems that were so evident in 2020 so they don't happen again, and so that every American, people who vote on the winning side and vote on the losing side, and people who don't vote at all can have confidence in the outcome of the election. Ken, we have a little less than a minute left, but I quickly want to talk about the border. Uh, Panama's foreign sure. minister recently weighed in and said that another caravan of about 60,000 migrants is making its way to the U.S. southern border and essentially called on the Biden administration to work with other countries to come up with a plan. Um, I'd like to get your take on that. And also, it seems like these groups of migrants continue to grow and are rather organized. Oh, they're very organized. It, surely people watching us didn't think it was a coincidence that thousands upon thousands of Haitians who have lived all over Central and South America for five or six years suddenly all showed up at Del Rio, Texas at the same time. It is not a coincidence. They communicate. Look closely at the pictures. They have cell phones, smartphones. They're all communicating on social media networks. It's part of how we know caravans are coming. Um, but 
the numbers, as you point out, are just getting enormous. And this is exactly what we told them would happen during the transition, and they just wouldn't listen. And America's paying a very dear price for that right now. Well, Ken, thank you as always for weighing in. We always appreciate it. Ken Cuccinelli, Director of the Election Integrity Project and former Acting Deputy Security for the Department of Homeland Security. Thank you again, Ken. Good to be with you.